Hi there, this is part two of my advanced uh, Illustrator tutorial. Uh, so in this part of the tutorial we're going to cover um, setting and modifying object properties primarily. So first I'll just draw a couple of objects here. Um, if we click on one of these, I should just point out something quickly here. Since this object, you can see here, this is the this tells us the properties, and it's got this red bar indicates it's got no fill. So I can't actually select the center of this object. If I gave it, let's first bring this to the foreground, and gave it a white fill. Sorry, I didn't have that selected. I'll do that again. Now I can move the object around. So it, have to, it has to actually have a fill in order for you to be able to move it from the middle of the object. So just to be aware of that, that's something that can trip some people up. So yes, we have these object properties for stroke and fill. So we can change the colours by simply bringing one or either of the um, stroke or fill to the foreground and then picking a colour. We can choose from the swatches here, the various um, plain colours. We've added some swatches which you can do by clicking on this menu. Um, and then for the stroke, we can change the stroke weight, we can change the caps, we can make it a dash line if we want, uh, and we can even do arrow heads. So it's all sort of uh, useful stuff. Um, the other properties we have for these objects are the position and size. So if you have enough area on your screen, you actually see this as um, coming up in this control bar. But what you can do is um, you can go to this transform link, which gives you these options for changing um, the position and size attributes of the object. So if I wanted to make this, I could do 50 millimeters, and Adobe's pretty smart, so you could, if you wanted to, you could put any uh, unit you wanted in, like uh, let's say 200 points, and it will just do the conversion for that, which is 70.556 millimeters. It doesn't look like it changed much. It's just a coincidence there. Um, and here we can see the reference point of the object. So I might just choose that as the reference point. And then let's just put it at 0, 0 and see where that is. So what you can see from that is that everything is in reference to this top left corner. Uh, meaning that if you want to you can do things in absolute coordinates from there. I'm just drawing another object onto the top here with a thinner fill, just bringing that up to four points. So we get into this situation and we've got quite a uh, we've got a few objects on the screen and we want to keep an idea of what's happening. Uh, one thing you can use is layer control. So if you could make a new layer and you can also rename your layers. So just leave that layer one now. Um, so this can be useful, quite useful in the beginning and you can simply drag and drop things between layers and you see there that the uh, the outline changes as I drag and drop it. Um, once you've got them here you could lock that bottom layer so that say you've got a background layer and you only want to edit stuff on this layer above. That's fairly useful. Um, now the other thing you can use is so I call this kind of layer control and another thing I use is group control. So if I just make this a, uh, let me just switch these and I'll give that a, just want to draw something here. 
So I'm pretending that I'm drawing a scale bar at the moment. So you um, might draw over an existing scale bar to hide it and make something that looks a bit nicer. Um, if these are all going to be quite standard, then it's sort of useful if they're grouped together. Um, so I'll just select both of them and then I usually just right click and say group. And now I'm moving that around as a single entity. So that's fairly useful for objects that are usually together. And if you want to, you can um, you can isolate that group and just edit part of it. So I just want to pop another raster in here. And you see this raster, it's a linked file at the moment, so that's the default behavior. You can choose to embed it. I wouldn't generally like to not embed my images because it tends to not work great. But what I tend to do is just have a folder with my Illustrator document and then the images it needs. Um, right alongside it in the same folder and I just treat that as a single kind of entity uh, so that kind of gives me the flexibility of not having embedded but uh, don't have that issue with uh, lots of links breaking. Uh, one thing I'll show you with these images is once I've kind of, we generally have to resize them uh, is clipping mass. So if I just draw any box over here and select these both, I can right click and choose make clipping mask. So this is what you should be doing instead of thinking about cropping things in Illustrator, is that you make this clipping mask and that is just kind of like a, a window through to what you're wanting to see. Another kind of useful tool is the path to grid tool. So if you go, if you draw a path, uh, let's give that default new object path. Um, it's not showing up on there, is it? But there's an option here which says split into grid. And we can make it two by three for instance and that's just gonna split that up like that so that can be pretty useful sometimes uh, that's all I want to cover I think um, generally it's a good idea to just from this point have a play with Illustrator and if you kind of have any things you're trying to find out you can search or ask me and you just want to find out what the name of the tool is if you want to search for how to use it and various other things so just get familiar with the lingo when you're doing these searches thanks very much bye